Hey, it's Taylor from Rant, and we're going to start doing some gear-specific videos in amongst the primarily educational ones that we normally put out. And today what we're going to be doing is a comparison between two antennas. Everyone in the public safety and preparedness communities definitely understands how crucial reliable communications is when you're out doing operations. So here at Rant, we are regularly using UHF Simplex comms on both analog as well as P25 protocol for our you know, routine operations. When we start getting into some training areas where depending on the course, we bump the area out to be very, very large. We have the mobile radios in each of our vehicles, as well as a standalone repeater system in each vehicle. And we also have a field deployable UHF repeater system as well. Uh, our big truck that we use for the really big classes where we have to bring like a mobile classroom out to an area to conduct a class, that has a telescoping 30-foot antenna mast. And we are currently looking into incorporating some HF capabilities into all this as well. But back to what we're doing today. As soon as you start to wear a radio on your body for an extended period of time and you're moving through some potentially you know hostile terrain, you find out real quick that your radio antenna plays a fairly big role in your comfort or you know discomfort level depending on, on on how it's set up and that's pretty much all going to depend on where is it rubbing and or where is it stabbing you at and in all of our primary careers the debate of stubby versus full-size antenna is just rarely a factor due to each county or city having a very bust, robust you know repeater system in place so it really comes down to an issue of daily comfort as you know, service is virtually guaranteed in those environments and simplex comms is virtually non-existent. There are some situations like very specific criteria for interoperability purposes in which we do switch to, you know, say VHF frequencies um, that are simplex. But for that, you know, we just just accordingly for those situations as whenever we're going to do something that involves, you know, something like that, we have a good amount of prep time to prepare for it. As far as rant goes, when we're out, you know, doing stuff, we don't have the benefit of having, you know, a communications infrastructure established because we're doing classes in all different areas of the country. When we're looking at this from purely the rant strategies point of view, and we don't have these, you know, robust repeater systems to take advantage of, we don't have that infrastructure set up because we're traveling to all different parts of the country to do these classes for our you know, purposes, mainly relying on simplex. Sometimes we have to we'll incorporate our repeater system. What we're primarily talking about, though, is just the UHF simplex radios that we're using. Um, and we're the testing that we're going to get into today is how much of a factor does the, you know, usually standard antenna, which are generally around, you know, six inches or so, compare to the stubby antennas, which are generally around three inches. Um, because those three inches can dramatically affect our comfort and wearability if you're out there just walking around with this thing all day. So, you know, why are we thinking this is such a big deal or something even worth exploring? It is the fact that usually the simplest and most effective improvement you can make um, that will have the greatest impact is to replace the antenna of your handheld radio. Now, just keep in mind, possibly for your specific situations, if you are using... FRS radios, for example, they do not allow external antennas. Usually your FRS radios come with a, you know, fixed molded antennas that you're physically unable to change it out. And just for clarity's sake, for this test, we are using Motorola XTS 5000s in the business band. So right off the bat, let's also keep in mind that the higher the frequency and the shorter the wavelength, the shorter the antenna. Um, usually if the physical length of the antenna is longer, the antenna gain is relatively higher when compared to a short antenna, the stubby antenna that we're going to be testing. Now, notice I referenced the physical length uh, of the antenna here. The other way you can lengthen an antenna would be to electrically lengthen one. When you're talking electromagnetism, antenna gain is a key performance parameter which combines the antenna's uh, directionality and radiation efficiency. Antennas do not have a power source that allows the antenna to create additional energy to boost the signal. 
an antenna just takes the energy uh, you know, that's available from the source and focuses it over a wider or a smaller area, depending on which one kind you're using. You've probably seen these measurements if you've looked at radios um, for your comms plans. And since this is measured in decibels, you'll see it expressed as either DBI or DBD. And if you don't know what those measurements mean, DBI is the amount of focus applied uh, by an antenna with respect to the isotropic, you know, with respect to it as an isotropic radiator. Your DBD refers to the antenna gain with respect to the reference from a dipole antenna. So an important thing to note here is that the antenna must be matched with the frequency of the radio in order to communicate well. So a long antenna may not necessarily have a good signal and the short antenna may not necessarily have a poor signal. The signal is good or bad mainly because the frequency of the radio and the bands are appropriately related. Again, hence why we think that this testing today could be so beneficial. So for these tests, again, we're using Motorola XCS 5000 radios. The receiving radio will have a six inch Motorola, it's a UHF antenna. One of the transmitting radios will use the same. Another, and the other is gonna be an XTS um, that will have a 3.54 inch Motorola antenna. And that's the stubby antenna that we're gonna use for this testing. So then as far as our distances go and where we're actually gonna do each transmission from, I utilize mapping software and I plot at range rings for the distances I wanted to conduct the testing at, and then utilized a propagation software to have an estimation of what the expected coverage should be. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out here is that I intentionally did not pick up an environment that was free from obstructions as I wanted this to be as real world as possible. Okay, so we've made it out to the test site. We have our GPS set. So what we're gonna do is use the distance on the GPS, walk out in half mile increments. Then from there, we have our receiver set up. We'll call on the radio, announce which antenna we're using and whether we're on analog or digital, and then we'll check the results. So the terrain here, we're actually losing a lot of altitude relative to where the receiver station is. So I think we're gonna do quarter mile increments instead, just to actually do a, a good test. So we're just past a quarter mile at this point. First thing we're gonna do is use the analog with the standard antenna. Radio check, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. This is the standard antenna on analog. Radio check, one, two, three, four, five. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. This is the standard antenna on analog. And now we'll switch to the stubby antenna. A stubby okay. antenna test on analog. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Stubby antenna test on analog. Analog one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Stubby antenna test on analog. Now we'll switch both to P25. Testing on P25 with the standard antenna one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Testing on P25 with the standard antenna one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And then the same thing with the stubby antenna. Testing on P25 with the stubby antenna. Quarter mile out, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. All right, we'll see you at a half mile. Testing on P25 with the stubby antenna. Quarter mile out, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we just made it to the half mile mark, so we're going to go back to analog with the standard antenna. Testing on analog with the standard antenna. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Testing on analog with the standard antenna. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Now we'll go to the stubby antenna. Testing on analog with the stubby antenna. Half mile range, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Now we'll switch to P25 and do both again. <laughs> Testing on P25 with the standard antenna, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one from a half mile out. 
Watching on 325 with a standard antenna. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one from a half mile out. Testing with a stubby antenna. Half mile range. One, two, three, four, five. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's go to three quarters of a mile. Okay, so we hit our three quarter of a mile mark. You can tell I took my hat off. Uh, we did gain some of that elevation back. So I'm happy that our altitudes are probably now pretty much even. So we'll see how that affects anything. So first again, we'll go analog with the standard antenna. Testing on the standard antenna on analog, three quarter mile range, one, two, three, four, five. Testing on the standard antenna on analog, three quarter mile range, one, two, three, four, five. And now with the stubby antenna. Testing with the stubby antenna, three quarter mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And now we'll do both on P25. Testing with the standard antenna on P25, three quarters of a mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing with the standard antenna on P25, three quarters of a mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing on the stubby antenna on P25, three quarter mile range. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Let's push it out to a mile. Okay, we've just made it out to exactly one mile out. We're gonna do the same test. This will be the final one. Testing analog one mile out with the standard antenna. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one mile out. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one mile out with the stubby antenna. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Finally, we'll switch to P25 back on both. Testing on digital, one mile out. Standard six inch antenna. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing on digital. Standard six inch antenna. Testing one, five. Testing one mile out on the stubby antenna. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I have no idea about the results. Let's get back. We'll check out the receiver, listen to the audio, and we'll see what we got. So I feel the results of that test pretty much spoke for themselves. I personally was really shocked at how much of a difference that extra three inches that you get on the standard antenna versus the stubby antenna actually made in real world environments. One thing with that though is the you know stubby antenna isn't necessarily a bad antenna to have. Um, if you're doing something where, hey, we know we're all gonna be operating within a certain sector and we know that you know the distances of that, stubby antenna may be more than adequate. Um, another thing where that could come in to be a positive is if you're doing things like small unit tactics and you don't want your signal being broadcast as far as possibly possible then stubby antenna may be advantageous and that could be your one of you know that you choose to go with because it'll actually provide you a little bit of you know security without having secure comms also to that when we talk about doing these um stubby antennas or these standard antennas when it comes to motorola radios the connector on those radios looks like your standard SWA style connector, but it's not. It's actually a Motorola connector. Go figure, Motorola has another proprietary thing specific to them. So, so their connector is specific to them. The SWA antennas will fit on them. However, if you put them on an SWR meter, you'll probably get some pretty funky SWR readings and may actually be doing a little bit of damage to your radio. So if you like this test, please let me know in the comments if you wanna see more things like this. The one thing that crept up into my mind as I was doing this and saw the, key, uh, the results of it was, what if I got a Motorola UHF whip antenna 
and compared that to the Apex style antenna, again, kind of just to test the actual, you know, range testing of these things. So if it sounds like a good idea to you, please let us know. Um, like, subscribe, do all that, and we'll see you in the next one. Whoa.